So uh, that was our, our teaser. We're uh, actually going back to Kobani in about a month um, to finalize this documentary. Um, so my producer, Brandon Gambling, could not be here, unfortunately, right now. Um, so unfortunately, you have the director, me, um, who is actually more scared right now than when I was crossing into Kobani. So congratulations, you're more terrifying than the Turkish military. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, so I guess I'm supposed to talk about my experience kind of going in. Um, we were going in with a gentleman from Germany who uh, was uh, checking out some of the buildings to find out what building he can help uh, create into a hospital. There's like some kind of engineering thing. I don't, I don't, I don't know enough about that. I'm just a filmmaker. Um, but uh, so we went in and we had these giant backpacks thinking, all right, we're good to go. We can handle this. And we were running towards a um, massive fence with a bunch of lights on. And, um, you know, we realized that we're not nearly as physically fit as we expected uh, when, like, halfway through, we're already sweating and everything like that. And then we were following a bunch of people who were joining the YPG, maybe eight of them. And I just remember looking forward. And then all of a sudden, looking back and seeing everyone else running away because the Turkish military had spotted us. So, you know, we start running in a um, completely dark field and you have no idea what's happening. And I ended up tripping, messing up my knee, and Brandon ended up hiding for about an hour and a half from the military. <laughs> he was white, I don't know how that worked for him, but, you know, I guess he just hit his face or something along those lines. Um, so obviously, you know, us and the German, were left, um, and we had to try again the next day. So the next day, they were really sweet, the PYD were really sweet. They sent us through the VIP route, um, through a minefield. Um, so we had like <laughs> a foot and a half of space upon which we had to shuffle with our massive bags, and um, yeah, that was, that was interesting. Um, now when we got into to Kobani, uh, everything changed. Uh, the rush was gone, the rush of getting across was gone, and um, all we saw was the rubble. And that's all you can see, for as far as your eyes can see. And all you see are the Kurds, who have this tenacity and strength inside of them. They might have nothing, absolutely nothing, but they'll invite you in for chai and food and tell you their stories, and it's something heartbreaking and 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 it gives you strength simultaneously it's it's a beautiful experience and um you know the children obviously were probably the most emotional parts of it um when dash came in in june july a month after we left or two months after we left uh, they killed a lot of children there so we don't know who is still alive there um also uh a lot of the nurses and doctors we interviewed are probably mainly dead because they were at the Doctors Without Borders Hospital. Um, and that military woman that you saw there um, was uh, killed as well um, just recently. Actually, when we posted this about a month ago or two months ago. So it is a, it is a hard movement to get behind and, and a hard movement to feel connected to. Um, but there is hope, and that hope lies in democratic confederalism, and that hope lies in movement forward. Um, my first movie, which I guarantee you no one has seen, um, was about the Egyptian Revolution. Um, <laughs> uh, and I posited that it's the beginning of a global revolution. Um, I posited that because of the 2011 revolutionary wave that went through. So we went and saw it in Europe, in America, all over the world, and we've seen movement after movement coming up. Um, I think the failure of the Egyptian Revolution um, exists in the fact that they couldn't point and say, this is what we want. They, they, they couldn't say, we want, you know, what we think is possible that was created in Tahrir, um, because it wasn't an elaborate system. And therein lies the failure of that revolution. But now, if this revolution continues and, and, and stays strong all around the world, we can point to Rojava and say, this is what we want. We don't want your global capitalism. We don't want you know, people to be put below profiting all over the world, whether it be slavery or um, slave wages or simply having you know, fox factories. Um, we can say we want our dignity, and this is how we're going to do it. So 
Um, sorry, I'm uh, still a little nervous. Um, <laughs> um, although I would like to kind of take uh, some note from the doctor over here who's really smart in saying that we need to criticize this as well. Um, the war has changed a lot of things. They had to be malleable in a lot of situations. When we talked to the people in the parliament, they, say, they said that the reconstruction um, group could not be 40% women. It just wasn't possible, understandable. Not many women can come across and who are engineers and help the rebuilding and reconstruction. Completely understandable. But we outside of Rojava need to ensure that that continues afterwards. We need to make sure that after the war is done, we put pressure to ensure that 40% is done. Another part, which um, Brandon, who is n not in sight, um, brought up was the economic reconstruction. In Efren, there's quite a lot of uh, co-ops happening, amazing things. But unfortunately, the war means that they need money. They need money for arms, they need money for bullets, and they can't get that outside of you know, arms strugglers, smugglers, sorry. So they need to continue with the capitalist economy. Completely understandable. But when the war is done, we need to be outside of Rojava saying you need to go back and fix this. It can no longer have bureaucrats, you can no longer have bourgeois, you can no longer have elites. This is a system by the people and for the people, and if we want to see this revolution done right, we have to put pressure on them to do so. Um, at the end of my short teaser there, um, everyone at the site had their two fingers up like this. I don't know if, if no one, I'm not sure if everyone knows what that means, but it means BG. So I think I'm just going to end this quietly and say uh, BG YPG, BG YPJ, and BG Rojava. Thank you.